Hey friends, again, this is Captain Fox back at you with another great video. This time, we're talking about farmland. Once again, farmland. We got a series coming. It's going to be in four parts. And check them all out. Even if you don't have a farm, check it out. Because this may motivate you to start farming. You don't have to have the um, J.R. Ewan acreage, North Fork, you know, you don't have to have a thousand acres. You don't have to have 50 acres. You don't have to have 10 acres. You don't have to have one acre to start a farm. You can start a farm in the city in your backyard. Check it out in a four part series. And this will be a great help to those that have air land and how to maintain the woodland because you just can't have land with a bunch of trees on it, acres and acres of trees, and just sit there because the tax value is going to go up. This will help you learn how to keep the tax value down, as well as preserve the, the forest that you have, or how you can maybe sell some of the, the timber in the correct way. So this is a four-part series, and it's brought to you by North Carolina state officials, not just someone standing up there giving you insight and they don't know what they're talking about. These are the, uh, seminars that I have attended with North Carolina officials giving us the correct information, how to control your land and how to start a farm. So it's a four part series, but check out how to start a farm. You'd be surprised how you can make money with a little bit of land. It's very important. Again, I emphasize the fact that many, many years ago, black like in the 20s and 30s, black people had land all over the United States, especially in the South, big farms or small farms. And it became air land. And guess what? They lost it. Because once the person that dies, that's trying to control the land and keep it going, these young people don't want that. They don't want to deal with that. And the, and the man comes, and you know who I'm talking about, comes and give them a low ball figure, and they go for it. But they don't want to be bothered. When our grandparents and great-grandparents have sacrificed, for, for example, my grandfather in North Carolina, bought a farm, and it's still in our family. And guess what? While he was at church on a Wednesday night, back then they called it a prayer meeting. And while him and his boys and daughters and wife, wife was at the prayer meeting at the church, because he was a deacon, yeah, old good old deacon, and uh, praising the Lord, the clan came and burned his house down. Why? Because they wanted his land and they wanted him to have his eight boys work for them for nothing. And he wouldn't let his sons work for them. Clan his people. So they burned his house down. But he put another house up there bigger than the one they burnt down. You know that infuriated him. So this is very important. And I want to get this information out there. On how you can have a farm. And don't have to be a lot of land. Be surprised. You can put one in your backyard. Just check it out, my series. Captain Fox, on the move, on the groove. Stay safe on the water. Check it out. Bam! And the last number that we have from 2021 is around somewhere between 3 and 4 million. But that's still a big loss for 15. And a lot of us know how that happens. We didn't. Our forefathers, our successes didn't understand the process. Or how to keep it, or they were swindled out of for lack of better term. But we're here to try to help stop that from happening. Because, like somebody said, like I tell them all the time, God's not creating any more land. What we got, we got. We got. Like we didn't do. All right, we move on. Okay, and how sustainable forestry came to be. Now, this is their reason. Uh, Okay, ability for forestry to support networks to increase land on practice. You read that. 
I'm gonna give you the green and cream ten cent version. Okay. <laughs> and what it was, somebody saw that this law of African American landowners was a problem, that was an issue, and they somebody thought about said, well, maybe if we have an organization that they trust to help them reach out to some of these agencies that they're afraid to go to, maybe it will be successful. So some pilot projects got started to, to do that. We're going to accomplish a goal called this side I won't really get into because it's kind of small, but it talks about as proper called the North Carolina. As you can see in the red, you know, we all have a lot of air property in North Carolina. And I think Jerry said before, but Jasmine said, with air property, it's hard to get a system. So you want to try to get out of this air property if you can. And we all here to kind of have to get through that. Uh, and the forest impact on North Carolina is really good. People don't realize the economic impact of forest in North Carolina. Of course, you know about from 2021, you got 18 point million acres of timber in North Carolina. That's, this is big right here. Most of it's owned by private families. Most people think big landowners own all the properties. No, they don't. A lot of, most of 12 million acres is owned by you all. Okay. Uh, it generated uh, $32.8 million into the economy. Uh, 204 million is dumped from paid the land. That's money that people got paid. For all the land, and you may like it, and it employed over almost 140,000 people in the industry. Okay, this is the Sustainable Forest Land Retention Network. Like I said, it started out with a couple of sites over as a project. As you can see, it has expanded to several states. Of course, we are from Warner, Warner Cooperative. You got up there yet? Uh, Red Five and Four Years. I tell you that. Uh, you have, in Virginia, you have the Black Family Land Trust. South Carolina, you have the Center for Air Property. Georgia, you have McIntosh C. Alabama, Leonard Missouri, Labor Education Assistance Network, uh, Mississippi, and you have the University of Arkansas Plan, Book in Arkansas, and Perry View AM in Texas. Now you see we have universities involved. And you see what universities they are. They're HBCU. But like I said, we are consistent, they are heavily involved in helping minority landowners sustain their land. Okay, and here's just an update. This year we celebrated 10 years of the Network Being Started. Like I said before, it started with us and two other uh, two other uh, partners. Uh, every partner, yes, everybody in this network has grown. Out of all those things I just showed you, everybody has grown in these last two years, ten years. As a matter of fact, last year, well, this year we had our ten year anniversary down in uh, Buckingham, Georgia celebration, and we even had the Secretary of Department of Agriculture come down and speak. So, so it is working. It is working. Uh, okay, some of the things that we accomplished in Long Rock, like to these are from last year, we are still working on numbers for 2023. This just in 2022. We had 288 land on participating, which that is wrong in a year. Uh, we had over 22,000 acres under management. Mm -hmm. We had 200 people, 205 uh, land on developed forest management plans. We had 23 tree farm certification, uh, 58 families in uh, the state plan were developed, uh, 93 properties was enrolled in TV Fresno View Valley. Uh, we'll get to that later if you want me to hit it now, we'll. Everybody know what Fresno View Valley is? Y'all get me out. Fresno View Valley. Fresno East Valley is a deferment, just like a tax credit. It, it is that's a credit. So if my land, if you qualify, all 100 counties have present use value mm -hmm. from the tax office. Forestry, if you have 20 acres of forestry and a forest management plan and a forest management plan, you can qualify to get your taxes deferred 
and lower your taxes. If you have 10 acres of open land, I think it's called open land, mm -hmm. open land, crop land, you can get your taxes deferred on those acreage. If you have horticultural land, which would be those wind houses, uh, or a nursery, so it's 10 acres, you can get your taxes deferred. If you do not have up to those numbers, then you're going to be charged at a higher tax, you'll be taxed at a higher rate. So we've seen uh, folks just do that part and reduce their taxes down to 80%. I just have the lady, her sister's in California, and she's down in Stedman, down towards Fayetteville, and her taxes, I, I generally say 50%, her mm -hmm. taxes were down 80%, and she was at the Sustainable Forest um, landowner conference last year, just to flew in from California, and she was there this year. So it worked. We start there. It makes sense to not. It makes sense. We talk about programs. I don't like to talk about programs. Let's talk about how to save you money from coming out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. Much better than a program. Now, the deal with the taxes, you got to go and ask for it. They're not going to come to you. Exactly. So, you have got to go in and ask. Don't yep. think that uh, they, they see how much land I have, they know what I'm doing. They do. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be your responsibility to get up and go into that office. And sometimes you've got to go more than one time. Yep. But don't give up mm -hmm. because you're eligible. Yeah, that's in all 100 counties. And Halifax County has one of the best tax assessors. In the land, the same land, I have the forms will help you fill it out. I will walk you over there and you will get it. Yeah, you will get it. You get it. So, does the deferment work for if I got 20 acres and I'm leasing it to a farmer? So, it goes, it goes to me as far as if my taxes. Are you going to pay taxes on Right. Are you the owner? Are you the owner? Yeah. Yes. yes. It, it, yes. It, it applies to you. But but the farmer is leasing the land, so you get the farm service for it, right? No. It has nothing to do with it. So it's just if you own the land? Ownership. Ownership. Ownership is Ownership. Okay. Yeah. And you have, of course, things you have to do to get appliances. That's like with forestry. You have to have a forest master plan and follow that. But as long as you follow that every year, your taxes will be deferred. The only thing about it, if you break away from following that plan, they can go back five years and pull up what you owe. That's the only bad part about it. You know, it's deferred. It's not, it doesn't go away from the same. It's deferred. But if you violate the stipulation of the project, you then can go back and request five years of tax. You did pay. Crazy. But as long as you follow, you got to, you don't say. That's the system on the also stipulation. You got to help with assistance through the effort. They send you the form and you fill it out. Once you're in the system, they'll send me, they send me the form whenever they want me to. I just sent it last year. Back in so. <clears throat> okay, these are the counties that we serve. It's in our the crop land is not included. Now, you see Burton, Chorn, Eastcombe, Gates, Bramble, Halifax, Hurtford, Mark, and Nash. The crop land is not included. Now, if you don't see your county up there, there ain't no trees on that. Don't worry. Because even though your field. account is not listed and you can't participate in our project, we are still open to provide you with information that you can help you to get to the people in your county that can assist you. So like if your account is not listed and you have some forestry issues or something you want to do with your property, we will direct you to the person in that county or another agency that can assist you. Not only is that county agency that can assist you, Ms. Evans Alexander, who's going to be up later, she has a way that she makes them see you for So there's a system out there that you got to pursue. It's not going to walk up like my David said, it falls in the lap. You got you to gotta, you gotta be aggressive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and the goals of our program, we got four goals. Now, I mean, we got goals, and this is what we talk to you with. Great family will. Increase asset value, land retention, food, expandable forage, and mat trees. Oh, that's the goal. You got to have a, you got to have a big goal. The forage right here. Land. That's the goal. And how we reach that goal are these four ways. We provide people in our project access to land on education, access to technical assistance for 
forestry, access to financial systems, and access to succession planning, and the area of property resolution. That's a big at the bottom. Like you saw in the map, there's a lot of area of property in the state of North Carolina. I had followed the one of the four things on the access plan on education, what we do. Uh, we help you find out who contact the kids, the technical assistance that you need, whether it's Terry, Office of USDA, NRCS, Forest Service. We help you contact them, put you in contact with the right person to help you. Uh, we talk with you how to get a forest management plan. Uh, you need reforestation on your property. We can help you get, get that started. Mm. Timber sales, consultant foresters. We can tell, talk about the timber industry. You know, your home probably don't know if I decide to do a timber sale, how would that work? We can put you in contact with people that will help you do that process as well. Uh, Forest health, estate planning is a big that kind of keeps you out of air of property if you're not in it now. People don't, a lot of times people don't want to talk about death. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just a reality. People don't want to talk about death. But death is inevitable. And you want to do all you can so when you are gone, your wishes are carried out and your property is maintained in your family. Because if you don't, you may have somebody come along and say, I don't, I don't care what grandma or great granddad did. I'm selling this to get money. But you need to have some type of state planning done. I mean, that takes some conversation to be had. Um, we also help with conflict resolution training, which when you get talking about that, conflicts come up. And the dynamics are different. Sometimes we need to talk about it, bam, we got a conclusion. Some may take two or three years to get that resolution. So uh, we can help you get that. Uh, the carbon market, a lot of you hear about that. That's the thing that's kind of going now. Uh, carbon farming, we can assist with the industry set up with that. There's that present use tax, the PUV, uh, conservation easement, agricultural forestry taxes, wildlife management, and forest education. That's a lot. That's what we can do as far as assisting with education on those subjects. Yeah. Okay. A set, a set, access to state and succession planning and area of property resolution. Uh, we can work and find out what area of property, explain to you what area of property is. Uh, kind of help you develop your family tree. That will help you kind of do some planning. Uh, wheels, liability, LLCs, trust yourself. We explain what those are. If that's something you're looking at, we can uh, provide some financial call share assistance with legal to help with that. Conflict resolution training. You need to go to, if you need to get your family together, go to some training. We can help with that. You know, sometimes you may need not talk to us, but maybe you need to talk to a outside person to get that family to work together. I mean, if that's what it takes, we can assist you with that. Of course, we do have financial assistance with that, like I said, with uh, legal legal pass. We have an amount that we can share, call share with your legal cost on that up to a certain amount. Okay, and this also, like I talked about before, we have we had to go through the tools of meals. Um, we do, if you're in our project, we constantly come up, we, we come to sponsorship for the administration of those conferences. If it's going on something, the conference is going on, it's going to benefit you. Uh, we can cover those calls, those lodging calls, registration. Uh, we also have annual tree farm meetings. Uh, our, that one of our biggest events is our annual land on conference, which you see we just had in October. That's a, that's a two day event that we have in Rocky Mountain. And it's packed full of information. Everything we talked about, we have people that we talk about. We have legal there, we have USDA, we have NRCS, we have FSA. Anybody you can think of that involves forestry and land. They're there doing that two day thing, and also we have vendors set up so you can have to go out and talk to them. So, and if you're a member of our project, you can come and call some of you and do it this way. We can come to call for those two days and you stay there. And once you get there, everything is on us. The meals, everything is on us. Um, Duke, uh, we also work with Duke University School of Environment. What we do that every year for the past several years, they have students that's in their master's forestry program. 
They want to come out to rural East and North Carolina and do their practices for their masters and their doctors. And what they do, they will come out to your property and do a false semantic plan for you free. It's part of their practice of um, such matters. They have to complete one, so we normally send them out to about, depending on how many students, you may pick two landowners in the program. They will go out and meet with them. They'll come out on the weekend and go to their property and do a uh, forest management plan, which will tell them what's on the land, which we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, uh, wow. This is our website. It's a lot of information on this website. It's recforestry.org. Mm -hmm. If you go there to this website, it, we have blogs on there, uh, people that have been in programs, success stories, training and webinars that we do, we post them on there. If you don't have to be a member to do this. That information is totally free. If you go to that website, we like to we have webinars, we have blogs, we have success stories, we have on there what we do, how we can get involved in this guy event. It's the real phenomenon because we we constantly update that. Like I say, every uh, presenter <coughs> at our conference, their presentation is on our website. So even if you're not a member of the project, you can still go there and watch it and pull up that information. It's free. Just click on the map. <laughs> Why force is important? Everybody know that. Uh, they provide <coughs> their needs, they provide clean water, they have natural fit for water filter, reduces flooding, runoff, provide shelter, waterproof wildlife.